it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and have I've got a treat for you. This is a brand new hot off the press planner from Just Scribble. So Siobhan at Just Scribble is like the sweetest lady. I have claimed her as one of my planner besties, whether or not she approves of that or not. I love her channel. I met her at Go Wild. I just love her. I met her sister and she's just such a sweet lady and I wanted to get some planners. She also offered to let me pick out a planner. So this is combined, her offering me a planner for PR combined with what I ordered myself. So I have one other planner coming as well, but I wanted to go ahead and hop in to all of the goodies and review them for you guys because it is a brand new planner. I hope she won't run out right away, but that's definitely a possibility with a first run dated planner. So definitely check her out. I'm going to leave all the info in the description box for you guys. And we're going to walk through cover to cover of her planner. It's so unique and different. I've got an unboxing for you and I've got lots of information walking through. This one may be a long one because I tend to ramble when I get excited about planners. So definitely grab a cozy beverage and let's hop into the video. Alrighty, here's the unboxing. I can't show the other side because it's got my shipping label, but her cute little sticker it matches all of her just scribble goodness. Here are the planners, which is so exciting. So I did order an A6. It has not shipped yet. This is all of the A5 goodness that I ordered. And here you go, I've got the blank notebook, the lined notebook, and the planner. The planner does come in two different chunks. So they are like the size, I think she said Stalogy size. These are bigger than the half years from Sterling Ink and together they're way thicker than a full year of Sterling Ink. So there are quite a few extra pages in these guys and I'm super excited. And then these ones are more like your half year um, typical size, but there's two different ones, scribbles and doodles. I got the blank one to do swatching and then the lined one to use as journaling. So they are TRP paper. I'm very, very excited to dig into this. These are full year together. So volume one, volume two, and I love, I love all of it. I think the covers are beautiful. She picked really just beautiful neutrals. I wasn't sure about the scribbles one, um, but looking up close, it has a really neat texture to it. And then these ones, they looked in her samples, they looked, I don't know, more dimensional and more spotty than it looks in real life. It's very subtle looking, whereas before, like seeing it up on her screen, it looked very much like big giant polka dots. And I'm not getting that vibes at all. Just like the slightest little polka dotty kind of texture, which we'll look at all of them up close. I want to open my little freebie goodness here. I got two little pouches of freebies. Of course, her tagline, like every video, she says, don't forget to just scribble at the end, which is super cute. It goes with her theming. Love the vellum. I'm going to keep this to be able to give a little note card to people. It actually looks gift card size. So we've got some little vinyl decals and a bigger decal. Look at that, super sparkly. And it looks like various different ones because this one has a different setup. And then her info with the logoing on there, which you guys know, love her YouTube channel, followed her for quite a while, met her at Go Wild, totally love her. I'm super excited about these little packages. I'm excited about this fountain pen in this package specifically. These are just little freebies. Look how cute, he's pink. Very, very cute. And she has been such a pen enabler, like pen enabler. I think I purchased two pens from her channel, like watching her videos. Um, I love, love her recommendations and things. So Got this, I did have shipping notice with it. And it does say A6 will ship in November. So the A6s have not come yet. This is just the A5s that I ordered and I got the horizontal. So I really just am excited about this. I'm excited to support her. Full disclosure, I did end up getting one planner for my PR and then ordered everything else outright with my own money. So one item was free, the rest I did purchase. So I spent my own money on this. I'm just gonna take them out of the packages and look at them real quick and then discuss. So I really like this cover. I, you know, I thought it was gonna be way more obvious. I wasn't sure what to think of it in pictures. I did get a corner ding, you can see that. I'm hoping that'll relax out of the cover. Like nice floppy, but still feels thick and sturdy at the same time. Real nice floppy book. And it just says 2025 volume one, designed by Just Scribble. Really pretty. Again, like a little ding on the corner, hoping that'll relax. It's not like an actual flaw, it's just a paper ding. So I think it'll be okay. Otherwise, like the cover looks pretty impeccable. There's a little like tiny, bit of where it wasn't chopped exactly. You can see, I feel like I could get a scissor in there and chop that little hangy bit. Otherwise, like looks, looks well made. 
looks just the nicest little texture. I feel like it's going to hide any sort of imperfections or scuffs you get over time. You can see the signatures, but again, like looks smooth going down the planner. So that's just something you'll see the signatures. You see the thumb tabs. Really good. All right, we'll open it up in a second. Here is the Scribbles notebook, and this one has the most interesting cover. I'm definitely not sure what she's calling this, but it looks way less obvious in person. A little polka dottiness. I don't know what to call it. And then this one's the most interesting one I've seen. It looks almost like corkboard, almost. I guess that look to it. It has the same sort of like dot texture, but the pattern on it is very interesting. Very beautiful, nice and neutral. This one has the rose gold on there, which is really pretty. Again, cover wise, I'm not seeing any sort of issues with this one. Very beautiful. And this one is just the lines, just TRP with lines, which I'm excited about. And then doodles. This one looks even more like corkboard with the coloring on it. They're just really pretty neutral options. Of course, I, I do love me some bright rainbow colors, but I feel like the the rose gold and the, I don't know, the purple boiling on there, it makes it just the littlest pop of color and I can add stickers and stuff because the covers themselves are really nice. And this one, again, let's look at every last edge bit. And this one is just plain. So I was thinking ink swatches. I could stamp and then like ink swatch in here. Beautiful, just TRP paper. Okay, I'm not gonna open volume two for right now. I'm just gonna look at this one and I'm gonna have to look at this one. Her layout is totally unique. And the one thing I thought about this was I am not sure how I feel about, where was it? The dot in the middle, that's the middle point for everything. So you can see the middle of the page. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. I'm gonna have to probably get used to the way that feels. This is a bundled planner. So your daily pages are bundled up with your weekly pages and the weekly structure is a different unique layout that I have never seen before. And I love how she does some of these um, goal setting pages. So we'll walk through them like all page by page. So that was it for the unboxing portion of this video. Let's hop back in and I'll show you guys the insides page by page. But look, look at them all together. Like the three shades of brown, gorgeous. Alrighty, I did end up un bagging on plastic wrapping the second part of the volume and then I also was playing around with them flipping through them a little bit. So right off the bat I just really like this setup in particular. I'll talk about things I like, things I don't like. I keep it real for you guys. Siobhan is one of my planner besties so I absolutely am so happy that she came out with a planner and of course like I'm still gonna give it to you guys straight and she told me like give honest opinions I need to know like everything I've already texted with her a bunch about this so she knows exactly what I'm saying in this video but there are things that I do not like about this planner I'm gonna be real with you guys there are a couple things I don't like but overall this is one of my favorite planners and I'm not just saying that because she is one of my planner besties I just love she did something incredibly unique and different. It is highly structured, but not so overly structured that it makes it really hard to like see what things are gonna go where. And that was one of the things, like when she said she wanted to make a planner, she was telling me a little about it. I was a little hesitant to be honest, cause she did want to add more structure into the planner. We're gonna walk through, you know, page by page, cover to cover, talk about what she did because it is so different. So I thought, you know, right up front, I was like, ooh, I hesitate because the Paper Test Weeks planner, they might come in TN size too, but there is so much structure that I kind of freeze and I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> like, What do I put in these different sections? Well, this one, I saw it and immediately I'm like, I know this could go here, this could go here. And it felt way more versatile. And I love she built in all the dated daily pages. You guys know I want a dated daily page. And one thing I liked about the paper test is the pages for the dailies we're bundled up with the weekly. So I really like that. This one is bundled as well. And there are also quarterly check-ins in here. And I told you guys, I like how the goal setting stuff is set up in this planner. So flipping through it back and forth, this is definitely going in my lineup for 2025. I really, really like this planner. We're gonna look at it. I will be using it and I just, I like it. And you guys know I'm not so much a neutral girly. I do love some neutrals, but I think the covers she picked are like perfectly neutral with the just enough pop of texture, visual interest, and also gold foiling on there. So this looks to be just plain gold foiling. 
gonna say is this one rose gold foiling so this one's more of a rose gold foiling this one's more of like a true gold foiling there and then the purple foiling on the doodles so i'll be using this one for pen swatching i think it's just beautiful just unlined and then this one is a lined journal so i'll be using this as actual journaling it'll just go in my pile of journals to be used because i like the line so let's walk through this again like i said two volumes there's January through June, and then July through December for this. So let's walk through, and like I said, everything's bundled together, which makes it really interesting. She's got recap pages, she's got goal setting, like preview type pages, and I really love the structure of this, and I'll, again, tell you what I like and don't like. So for one thing, as far as a neutral cover goes, this is pretty much as good as you can get. It's got cool texture on it, it's gonna hide some imperfections, it's got the gold foiling, it's nice and floppy, but still, like feels thick and nice. I am not gonna be putting hardly any of my planners in plastic covers. I just don't want the feel of plastic covers and this feels nice. So I'm gonna just keep it like this. It did get dinged up in transit, which is a little disappointing, but also at the same time, it's gonna get dinged up and, you know, kind of manhandled because uh, I'm not gonna be delicate with it. So got your front page. These are the pages that always get glued together in these kind of bound books. So she just left this as the title page, the one with the plans, and then you have a little place to put a key. And then her yearly is a little bit different. I like that she put the boxes around this. I don't know what other company I have reviewed in the past. They put the boxes around it. And I was like, that makes it so easy to color in the actual sections. Now, of course you can use dot pins or the like the translucent dot stickers, lots of different options, but I think you can just plain old color in the box. So I do happen to really like the boxes on there. I would have loved to see week numbers on these, but there is room to write your own week numbers on there. But I feel like a lot of companies don't put the week numbers on there. But as somebody who did like project lifestyle planning, I want to stick some weeks on there if I end up using this page. And then it gives you a little bit of um, planning forward because this is only a six month book. It covers July, August, September, October there for you so that you can do a little forward planning so you don't have to fully move into this book ahead of time. Like if you've got weddings, vacations, appointments, all that stuff, it gives you room to put those in as well. And now here is the like the habit tracker type of section. It does start in January, it gives you through June. You'll have to move into the next book for July through the rest, but it's your very typical standard um, setup here. Again, love the fonts she chose. It's just a nice sans serif capital letter font, just gorgeous. And you get your little header section, your little bottom section here, and then all the days. It does not give you the days of the week. So I'm thinking as somebody who hops around in planners a bunch, I could set this up for any time. You know, I don't have to necessarily use it for 2025. And same with the, the daily pages. Um, I could probably cover up one or the other of these. But anyway, we're moving ahead. Um, I like that it's not the days of the week on here and you get one extra box because of that. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes, which is pretty good. Um, also, one thing to note about this, their grid is a little bit bigger than the sterling ink grid. And I don't know right offhand, like the measurements, but I do have a sterling ink handy to show you guys a little bit of the difference here. The, the gridding is just a little tiny bit larger, which I think is helpful. I think this is a pretty standard size grid still, but I think the sterling ink's a hair smaller. Just to note if you already have that book, so there's your little habit tracker. And then here's where you move into some of your goal setting stuff. So you got a blank page here. You could do like a vision board on this page. And because these pages are TRP, you can see the grids behind it. So if you wanna use those as guides to write, you totally can. And so this is your 2025 page. It's just fully gridded down at the bottom with three empty boxes up at the top. And I'm thinking you could totally find some little cute post-it notes that would fit directly in these boxes. They're bigger than like your standard post-it note size, but I totally think you could. And again, because these you can see through, you can see the grids behind it to use as guides if you wanna write in those boxes. But it gives you a place for like three main goals or three main subjects of some sort. There's a lot of these three sets built into the system, as you'll see. Here's your annual goals and there is spaces for eight, which 
as a Moxie Life person, I've used Moxie Life now for three years and I'm going to be using their system for 2025. I wasn't sure what planner I was gonna actually use for my goal setting. Well, I can put the goals right there. It's got your eight categories. So the eight sections is not like unique to Moxie Life. They don't own the trademark patent on eight boxes for categories. Cultivate What Matters uses the eight boxes. Bloom Daily Planner, I think also uses eight boxes. A lot of the Clever Fox planners use eight boxes. This is just a very typical, a way to separate out your goals. And then you move into your quarterly pages. So you'll get these quarterly pages throughout the book every three months. You get a blank on the back. Again, vision board. Um, it could be like a currently inked page. It could be all sorts of things. It just gives you a blank page. And this is your same kind of page here, your quarter one. You get the same three boxes and then grid at the bottom. All of these pages have been numbered all the way through this book. So you got a key in the front. You could totally set up a page as an index up here as well if you want. Some of these blank pages could be index pages. So this quarterly page looks like the yearly page. So you're breaking the goals down just a little bit further and you'll see there's some monthly goal setting stuff built in as well. But this doesn't necessarily have to be goal setting. It could just be like your three favorite pictures of the quarter, like one per month. It's set up in a, just a very versatile way. So again, quarter one, you get your goals for quarter one and you get eight boxes, which I absolutely love. I love anything that comes with eight boxes. It just works out perfectly for my personal goal setting because I use the Moxie like eight categories. And then you move into your tracker. So this is where you're going to get some of your stuff bundled together for the quarter. You can see you get one for January, February, and March. And this is your habit tracker. And this is really big, guys. I'm not gonna lie, I am not a very good habit tracking person. I do not stick with it very well. I'm very much like, oh, I fell off midway through the month. Might as well give up. So I'm going to attempt to be a little more patient with myself and just have blanks if needed. But this one gives you so much room to track habits. And here's your part for the week, the one through five, in case there's five weeks in the month. And then you get your days of the month down to 31. And in this case, February is cut off at 28. And then your weekends are grayed in. And see that and so all of this is gridded so you can you know dot pin these color in the boxes shade them in however you want and you have room for tons and tons of goals and things and this definitely doesn't have to be like goal setting or habit driven it can be things like what days did i read if even if it's not like your goal like i want to know what days i worked out so i can see how many days i worked out in the month it doesn't have to be necessarily goal driven it could be totally data driven so i like the idea that this also includes your week goals too so if you like have a weekly cleaning day make sure it's one of your things on this thing to track so i like this section and it's just set up really nicely so there are lines on this side and then down here at the bottom there's just grid so you can set this up to be like one thing i'm thinking is like a weights tracker how much weight am i weightlifting? I can track that down here as like a bar graph. How much sleep am I getting? You can track it in a bar graph form down here at the bottom. So I like that's built in already. And we're gonna count these lines. So we got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that's a lot of dang goals or things you wanna track. 24 spaces in there. And then you get one of those for every month. So I do like that it's all nice in one row, um, but it is sideways. That's one thing I kind of don't like. Other planners do it the same way, it's sideways. Whereas like your other trackers in the front here, they go down the page. These ones you kind of have to turn because you're gonna write things here and it does make it so all of the numbers go across, but I personally don't like having to flip my book around that much. So there's one of the things I'm like, I like the habit tracker, but I also don't like that it's sideways, but then it won't fit the other way. So I get why she turned it sideways. That's just one of the things. So moving in, you get a lined paper. And then here is your little calendar. So you get lots of goal setting, lots of quarterly stuff built in. You get your three here, your spaces here. And I definitely recommend you watching her video going through these. She tells you different ideas and how she intends to use these pages on her own because she's going to be using this planner too. Obviously she designed it, um, but I just find it interesting to hear her ideas for certain things like these spreads in other planners. I don't typically use at all. I just, I never have gotten into them. The habit trackers, I set them up, I use them and then I just totally fall off on those. 
I definitely will use the goal setting pages because it's the eight cat. All right, my camera cut me off, <laughs> it got warm. So this is one where I'm like, I don't know what I'll put in this. Maybe it could be a mileage workout tracker. These may be simply just crossed off day to day. It could be a quarterly highlights, not sure. Again, there's the dot in the middle of the page and then you move into your January. So it's the same kind of monthly setup here with the three boxes grid down at the bottom. You get your monthly calendar and I love how she did this monthly calendar. You get a little bit of scripty font, which is a nice touch in there. It is a Monday start. You do get your weeks on these monthly calendars, but they're way over here. They're not taking up a lot of space. They leave this sidebar completely clean, which is amazing. Let's also see, there's five weeks here. Let's also look at what a month looks like when their month drops down. Okay, so here's a sixth week. You get the dropped down sixth week on the calendar. And notice you can see the other numbers. Now they're a little bit slightly lighter than the full current month. Like you still see the ones, twos, the end of the other month. They're a little bit lighter, slight grayed out versus these ones are fully dark gray. These ones are just a hair lighter so that it's a distinction. But if you're somebody who does weekly planning, you do like a 13 week um, or a nine week goal setting type of thing, you want the full week all together on your monthlies because you'll use these in like four week increments forget this week but you want those dates on there so I like when planners include the before and after days for those monthlies then you move into pages that are just for whatever you want them to be for so again could be like monthly goal setting in this case for me I could put like all the eight boxes in here again so here's something we're going to talk about with these pages the dot in the middle is a division dot. So that's how you can divide your page in half. And now this is the main dislike thing about this planner. It is super subtle. It's not a very dark shaded inbox, but it still like draws your eye away. And this is the one thing I don't love about this planner. I totally flat out told her it is really subtle. So it's not going to be something that bothers me. Like looking at the page, I'm not going to be like, oh, that top drives me crazy. But it definitely is something I notice. I just don't plain old love. I don't also love those dots like up in the tops, the division dots. I don't use hardly any of the division things at all ever. Um, but I don't use them all. And I feel like the ones on the edge at least are a little bit more discreet. Whereas this one's like smack in the middle of the page, which helps you divide the page, obviously, but it's still just smack in the middle of the page and I can see it. Like it's there. I have eyes. I know it's there, even though it's super subtle and it's just something I don't love. So I would have much rather it been like on the edges. I mean, I've seen way worse. So I'm not saying that it's like the worst division option out there, but it definitely is noticeable in the middle for me. Subtle, but it's still there. So you can see like it's just the lightest shade box. And I thought when she was reviewing it that it might be darker than it is, but in real life, it's hardly noticeable, honestly. But it is there just so you know, it is really there. <laughs> Here is the horizontal spread. She also has a vertical spread that's your typical 1.3 inch sticker. So your Hobonichi cousin kits and things will fit in those. You get the vertical option as well. I got horizontal because I really like this setup. So this one's a little bit different. It is a dashboard sort of setup. So you get your weeks on one side and then a little dashboard setup on the other side. And now this one, like I said, slightly structured, but still really open to use however you want. So if you're looking at this straight on, it looks like this is also gridded over on this side, but it's not, it's lines with a checklist. So I like the idea that they line up with these dots, but if you wanna just use the lines as grids, you always can just use them the same way you use this because you can see the grids behind it. So I feel like that right there with the TRP paper, very versatile. Same with this focus box. There's nothing in the focus box. You could do a little brush lettering, quotes or things in there, but you also have those lines behind it. So if you're somebody like me who needs lines every single place or grids every single place, you can totally use the ones behind it and it will work. This part has lines, so that one works for me. But yeah, this big open box or these um, big open monthly boxes, I'm gonna be using the grids and stuff behind it because you can see all those grids because I just you know I need it <laughs> I need the line so I like that it's nice and clean and sleek looking and then I can also use the lines behind it so here is your actual weekly spread here so for appointments to do's I would probably set this up as like a weekly 
um, running to-do list or carry this over to make it a daily section. And then you have a weekly running to-do list here with the check marks. You also get the focus, the priority section. This whole area is gridded, so if you wanted to do any sort of metrics, you totally could do that here, like a little sleep graph or a little workout graph, whatever you want as far as that. You still have the room to do something like that. You also have some habit trackers down here. You got room for seven habits. And then there's two little mini checklists. So I'm thinking as a YouTuber, that could totally be my YouTube checklists down here. Whereas this is like my home and various kid related tasks this could be like my youtube things to film my youtube things to edit this little section down here so if you want to keep your things separately this could also be like a weekly checklist where it's like i want to do this mini workout so it'd be like i want a 30 minute ride a 45 minute ride weightlifting arms legs um, glutes like all the things you want to do and then you just check them off as you go so just totally be like workout related and there's two of these, so it could be like one is a workout related thing, one is something else. It also could be like your meals. You could track any of your like meals of the week because it's seven boxes. So it could totally be like your dinners for the week. It's just so nice and versatile and I just saw so many ideas. As soon as I saw this spread, she was showing me things before the planners came out. And I was like, ooh, girl, I just, I love this spread. I feel like it's super versatile, no matter what you've got going on. Just to have these two little checklists, they could be, you know, one day a week type of thing. You could put Monday through Sunday here, or however you want to do it, and have two little week checklists on there as well for things like meal planning or workouts, or in my case, I would do maybe to film to edit sections. I just love the way that this spread is done just so nice it's not super structured like if you don't want to use any of these down at the bottom you still have plenty of room for notes and stuff all over this weekly spread i just love the structure yet versatility built into this because you don't have to use any section in a specific already planned out way you just get to decide for yourself and again love the font choices love how the ink is not quite black it's just nice and dark. You can see all your grids and lines and things. So you get your weekly spread. I'm like gushing over it. I really like this one. It's so unique and different, but still has so much room for whatever you want to put on here. And what I like about this one is it moves right into your weekdays. So the dated weekdays are right bundled together. So if you're one of my longtime followers, I really liked the paper test planners. They have the days bundled after the weekly spread but these days are not there. There's no actual anything on the pages, whereas Siobhan, just scribble, has the dated pages, and you also get this page. So this could be, you know, further carrying on all of this information. And this is at the beginning of your monthly section. So you get this two notes page, but every week you get this built-in page as well. So this could be a weekly goals page. And then you got your daily spread here. This is a 12-hour um, clock here for your timetable and it's not divided out where I feel like some planners will divide the page for you and it has the line built in. This is you can use however much space you want. You do have that middle square to divide the page however you want. I'll just ignore those but I also don't find it helpful when there's a giant line in the middle of the daily page because this right here this timetable right up against the edge you still have a full page if you're just going to use this for journaling for instance you can totally do that and ignore these numbers. So the numbers go from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and is a 12 hour clock. So there's noon, 12, and it goes back to 1 p.m. Uh, and this is um, done in half hour increments. So there's a gap between each number. So you have your half hour lines as well. So I find this incredibly versatile. I love the way she did this. And I love that it's bundled with your weekly pages. So you get your week, you start on the Monday, you go all the way through. Wednesday, Friday. You get a full page for each weekend day and then you move back into your week and you get another page every week. So that's why this book is built into two books because she gives you that extra weekly page every week. You get those quarterly pages which I'll walk through. You get tons of goal setting pages in the front. It becomes a big beefer with all those pages. So that's why she broke it up into two because this is way bigger than your typical like full year planner. You can see the difference there put them side to side it's like one and a half full planners it's huge so I love that she broke it into two and it's like I think she said stylogy size so it's still like a nice 
beefer, but I love all the cool setting stuff built in. And this totally could be a one, one and done planner. So going in, your months are set up all the same way. We're gonna squeeze all the way to the next month so I can show you how it's set up. And then we'll go to a quarterly section. So getting to the end of the month, all the way. Okay, so your last stuff is bundled. Here's where November starts. November, or November, February. <laughs> We're gonna be hopping into November in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is actually January moving into February here. You get your day pages and then you get your recap and move into the February pages. So you get your January recap and this one's done a little bit different. You get your grids on top, your three boxes on the bottom. So if you're setting this up as three main goals or three main tasks, you can follow up with them down at the bottom here. So I love you get a recap and then you move into your next month. You get both. I feel like a lot of planners, they'll give you like, a page between sometimes, and they don't have it necessarily designated for the end of the month versus the beginning of the next month. I love you get both in this section. Move into your next calendar. Again, set up the same way. You get your two page spread for like monthly goals, for instance, weekly, daily pages. So all the months are set up the exact same way, but I'm going to find the end of the quarter. Okay, so we're moving into the end of March. You get a March recap. Then you get your quarterly section pages before your April um, goal setting. I'm trying to find it. So here's your April goal setting page. So ordinarily these pages would be next to each other. Well, this time you get your quarterly stuff every three months. So this is all built in. So you get your quarterly recap done the same way. Boxes down at the bottom. So if you had three quarterly things planned out, you can outline how they went. Then you move into a blank page. You get your quarter two page set up the same way, three boxes. Your quarter two goals, which I love. I love this eight box spread. And then you get your three habit tracker pages, your blank page, and then your little mini calendars quarterly page. And again, like, I don't know how many use this. I totally think, honestly, it could be like a reading log if I were to stuff everything in one planner, which I totally, and bad about using like 42 different planners, I could totally stuff it in here if I wanted to. It could be like books read, cross off the days that I read books or give myself little stickers. Right now I'm giving myself little stickers for my reading log. <laughs> but there you go, it goes right into April. So you get your gridded page, move into your April page, and then you hop into your same monthly things. So with this one, it's the quarterly recap, but it moves into line pages. Okay, editing Sammy here. I keep saying lined pages or dot grid pages. I've edited it out so many times in this video. I'm getting so frustrated with myself. They are gridded pages or blank pages. And I specifically say blank when it's a blank page. But when I'm saying lined or dot grid, I totally mean gridded pages. Um, so just ignore when I say the wrong thing. Because <laughs> it's gonna put your quarterly recap stuff in the front of this book. And then here you just get lined pages. And I don't know how many it is right off the bat. You can probably do some math here. You got your quarterly recap. You got 339 all the way to um, 381 and 382 on the back here. I did end up doing a pen test. I used like the most juicy pens I could possibly think of. And this fountain ink feathers. So I used like a legit naughty fountain ink and it held up pretty well this marker is super duper juicy i used multiple streaks on all these ones i used multiple streaks so i'll do a whole complete pen test video for you guys coming up but there's the little sneak preview it held up pretty well aside from like my feathering ink and a really really thick juicy moxie highlighter and then here's the very end here it says to be continued don't forget to just scribble so the other one's going to be set up in the same way but we're going to walk through the beginning so you can see the difference here so you got your calendar you get your next um, four months set up in the same way as this you get forward planning habits your same 20 25 pages your annual goals and then here's where that quarter three page continues so you got your quarter two recap moves right into your quarter three starts okay quarter three goals trackers little calendars moves into your next month monthly and then you get your quarterly pages so we'll hop all the way to the end here it's set up in the same sort of fashion here 
So here's your December pages. And you get up to January 4th, 2026 because of how um, the week ends, the last week of December. Got your daily pages, your quarter recap. Here's your December recap, quarter recap. 2025 recap and then lined pages at the end. I mean gridded pages. I always say lined, but I mean gridded. So you get quite a few of those as well. Just the end and don't forget to just scribble, which is her tagline. She says in the end of all of her videos. And there you go. I really like it. I think it could totally be a one and done system. It has all your goal setting, all your habit tracking. I like the size of it. It's still a big chunky beefer, but it's split into two. So it's not like you know, kind of massive. Like I feel like the full years are pretty massive on their own, but adding in all those extra pages, you know, it adds like half of a, a book's width to something like a Sterling Ink or a Hobonichi where they're super duper thick. So I really like her take on this. I feel like it's so unique. It adds so much extra stuff. I feel like a lot of people want a little bit more than some of the other planner options out there. And this just fits the bill. I feel like this one, it's just such a nice, unique option. You guys know I love me some TRP paper, so I'm really happy and I'm going to have lots of fun with this one. So it will be in my lineup. I can't commit to it being my only book because, you know, I want to use a bunch of different planners, but I will definitely be playing around with this one for 2025 and giving it a test run. And one thing I liked when I was flipping through, and I probably mentioned it in my little clip yesterday, I love how the books coordinate. They're like nice different shades of brown. and. Guys, I'm not a complete brown hater. Of course, I love, love me some bright, fun colors. Like this pen case is just gorgeous. But I even got a brown fountain pen. I'm going to get a couple other ones. I like some rose gold and brown ones. I got a coffee colored fountain pen. I'm using Caramel Sparkle in here, which is a very much neutral color. I've got another like goldeny type of neutral color. I'm not always just a bright rainbow throw up girly. I do like me some neutrals too, so I'm not ragging on the neutrals. I just wish, you know, I wish everything came in rainbow colors as well. <laughs> I would love to see in the future, of course this is her first year, but I would love to see in the future her offering like a pink cover or her favorite color is purple. I would love to see a purple cover like this. This is purple. But I would love to see a purple cover in the future. I think she did great and for her first iteration, I feel like she thought of so much. She was so careful about everything she put into this planner. So I do hope you will check it out and I'll have lots more videos on it because it's gonna be in my lineup. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you Siobhan for letting me test out your planner even though I would have bought them anyway. <laughs> and so I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me along and I will catch you guys next time. Have a great day guys, bye.